welcome to this new widget tutorial of multi-window marketplace request for code uh, system and in today's video tutorial we'll be showing you uh, how uh, this particular plugin works for non-existing products for example if we have any product or services that are not uh, belonging to the store for them how the customers would be able to uh, set up the request for code uh, within the WooCommerce multi-minute marketplace system so for that let me uh, go ahead and let me show you that and uh, apart from that we will also be showing you the backend configuration that is required for this particular module and in the previous video we just showed you the customer and the seller end how the customers would be able to make RFQ to the sellers uh, within the marketplace itself so uh, let's get in and let's first see how the customers would be able to uh, send an RFQ for the non-existing products that do not belong to the store itself so for that let me take you to the web store front end and uh, we'll be logging into the customer account first so here i'm at the web store front end and uh, i'll be uh, logging into the customer account first so i'll just tap on the login button here and then after i'll be logged into my customer account now what i'll do i'll go to the quotation section so as to set up a art fq for a new product that is not uh, within the marketplace store itself and to do so what i need to do is i need to click on the add new product rfq button here and it would take us to the section where we can add a new product request for quotation here as you can see so uh, we need to enter the product name uh, so we need to create the product for example we'll be creating a t-shirt green color and we need to set up the quantity we need to uh, enter the description so I'll just add a demo uh, description then we need to add some sample images if you have so right now I don't have any uh, images so I'll just leave this uh, apart then we need to set up the company name the email address the uh, uh, the project description and the title so we'll set it as discount for bulk purchase for the t-shirt green color and if you have any other specifications you can enter that and uh, you can set up the product inquiry as well for example we have set it as how much for the each product and uh, thereafter what we need to do is we need to uh, tap on the request for code button and our quotation would be added successfully so you can see that we have the main quotation details uh, the quotation id is 24 the product is t-shirt green color the quantity 100 the description of the product company name email address project or the uh, description or the title for this particular quotation and the product uh, inquiry for example how much for each product and right now uh, nothing is there in the open quotation list because the seller has not yet uh, any of the sellers have not yet uh, basically uh, responded to this particular quotation now uh, let me go ahead and let me uh, log into the sellers account so for that I'll just log out of the customers account first by tapping the logout button now I'll be I'll be basically logging into the vendor account so I'll uh, enter the login the password and tap the login button and this will log me into the sellers uh, uh, account so here is the left hand side for the dashboard and we'll navigate to the MNH uh, RFQ section and under the uh, open uh, tab here you can see the quotation ID 24 t-shirt green color quantity quoted quantity is 100 date created the uh, customer's name and add quotation section under the uh, action block so here from here the seller can basically add the quotation for this particular uh, product that is not there within the marketplace itself so uh, now this seller can basically respond to this uh, customer's uh, quotation request for the product or the service that is not there within the uh, store itself so to do so the uh, seller needs to tap on the add quotation link here and this will bring up the actual quotation of the uh, customer and here the seller can basically set up the quantity if he can provide this kind of a pro uh, product or uh, uh, the uh, service to that particular customer's uh, customer uh, who has requested for this particular RFQ. Now we can set up the uh, price per product. We can set up uh, the comment as well from the sellers end. Yes, we can do it. And thereafter, uh, if the seller wants, he can also add the image for this particular product to show the uh, customer and uh, 
to check with the customer whether uh, he likes that or not and there after the seller needs to tap on the add quotation uh, button and the last and um, this would uh, say, uh, basically add the quotation and uh, here you can see that uh, the comment has been added and the seller's quoted info has also been uh, saved now let me go to the uh, customer's account so for that i'll just log out of the seller account and i'll be logging into the customer account once again i'll be navigating to the quotations and now here uh, we have the uh, requested quotation list as you can see and this is our t-shirt green color i'll tap on the link view quotation under the actions column here is my main quotation and now uh, here we can see that uh, so you can see that the quotation id uh, is uh, right now open and we'll tap on the view link under the actions column and this will bring up the quotation details and the seller code details 100 quantity five dollar the price of the product and the status is as open and after that we can see the comments as well so from here the customer can reply back to the uh, seller and if he wants he can approve this as well and tap on the send button uh, to basically approve this particular request for quote for the product or the service that is not uh, available there within the market marketplace itself so after the customer has generated this particular RFQ for that uh, product that is not there uh, the uh, seller if possible if he wants uh, to fulfill the uh, product there he can basically reply to uh, that RFQ and they can then proceed further as I've already shown you in the previous video how uh, they can exchange the messages and how they can add the images and lastly the customer can basically approve the quoted price from the seller and then for the quoted price uh, how basically the customer can add the product into the cart and can make a checkout with the number uh, the, with the uh, with the required quantity and the price per product for the products so uh, now let me take you to the admin backend panel and let me show you what different options are there for this particular module how we can configure it initially from the admin backend panel so for that let me take you to the admin backend panel now so here i'm at the uh, backend panel i have uh, typed in my username and password and tapped on the login button to log into the woocommerce marketplace backend panel for the admin and after you successfully install this particular plugin you'll have this marketplace rfq menu option and under that you have three different options one is the quotation list attribute list and the settings now let's go to the settings first and uh, on the settings page uh, here we can see that we have the settings for the request for quote and uh, and here we have three different options to configure so the first one is the select status so the admin can enable this module by uh, choosing uh, by choosing an option as enable or disable enable enables it disable disables the uh, functionality itself then we have the uh, minimum quantity for the request for quote uh, there so here we uh, the admin needs to enter the minimum quantity of quotation that uh, should be asked for the uh, quote or for the bulk so we have set it as 100 it depends upon you you can set it as required then we have a request for quote approval required so you can choose it as enable or disable and if you have uh, enabled this option then whenever a customer requests uh, for a quote and then that request gets to the admin first and then the admin must uh, manually uh, let know the uh, uh, vendor for that thing for the request and uh, a mail is sent out to the uh, respective seller and that uh, basically appears under the quotation list and if you have chosen this option as a disabled then uh, directly the request would be sent out to the vendors without uh, the approval of the admin there so that was about the uh, settings the basic settings you just need to tap save changes thereafter now let's go to the quotation list and let's see what different options are there and then we'll be going to the attribute list as well so uh, uh, under the let's go to the attribute list first so uh, here the admin can basically add the attributes for the quotation form uh, which the customers have to fill to request for the quotation and uh, for that uh, the admin will navigate through marketplace rfq and needs to tap on the attribute list sub uh, uh, sub menu item uh, here the link that you can see here and this brings up the attribute list and uh, 
To add a new attribute, the admin can tap here on the add attribute button and that brings up the section wherein the admin can enter the attribute information wherein he needs to enter the default label for the attribute, the attribute type whether it's a text or a number, a required type whether that particular attribute is required or not and can also choose the attribute status as enabled or disabled. And after saving that, the admin would be able to find that created attribute under the attribute list itself. So right now you can see that and you can also manage uh, the attributes by tapping the manage button under the actions column for the respective uh, attribute. And uh, now let's go to the quotation uh, list. So under the attributes, we have created the attributes. So here we will find all the main quotation lists uh, that have been placed by the different customers from the storefront and uh, so as I've already told you, if uh, the admin has set the request for quote approval as required under the uh, settings, if you have chosen this option as a, as enabled, uh, then the uh, um, a button would appear basically in front of uh, uh, each of the, uh, uh, what we say as the quotations, where from the admin can basically notify the sellers. So here, right now because uh, we have set it as disabled if we choose this as enable and save uh, the configuration all right we don't have access to that level right now so for example uh, if uh, that option is uh, the settings option is set as uh, enable then what happens is that uh, right now we can see that we have a manage option here uh, then if we have chosen this option as uh, uh, basically enabled then here for the manage uh, button we can see a notify seller option and that will uh, look like something like this when uh, we have set the setting uh, that is uh, this setting is enabled then we will be able to see a notify seller option in front of that particular uh, uh, RFQ that has been set up by the customer from the web store front end otherwise if uh, this option is set up as disabled then we can just see the manage options under the uh, main quotation list here and uh, and that's much uh, for the main quotation list section and for the marketplace uh, rfq backend configuration so i've just showed you the settings the attribute list how he can how the admin can create the attribute list and how we can set up the quotation list wherein we can manage uh, each of the quotations there so for example if we tap here on the manage button uh, the admin can basically check them the uh, quotation information here as you can see the attribute information as well and the other ones as well and from here uh, uh, the admin can check the complete information of a request for quotation, quotation that a customer has uh, put up from the web store front end so uh, that was much about the uh, backend configuration and how a customer would be able to request for quote a product or a service that is not available there within the store itself and uh, how a seller can process that particular request for quotation for the product that is not there and the rest of the process as well and how the admin can basically set up the module itself and uh, create the attributes and uh, can check the uh, what we say as uh, the quotation list from the admin backend panel and uh, how he can basically uh, notify the customers if he has uh, chosen the option that is request for quote approval required as enabled then how would that option appears uh, very in uh, under the quotation list the admin would be able to notify the sellers for the same so uh, that was much about this particular module that's the uh, woocommerce multimedia request for quote plugin and i hope it helped you out and if you have any questions or queries regarding this particular plugin then you can always get back to us at support at the rate of webpool.com or you may raise a ticket at webpool.uvds.com. Thanks for watching this video and have a great day ahead.